Hi, Monica Perez here. I just wanted to say a few things about that blind Chinese dissident, Chen, who escaped from his house of house arrest. He climbed over eight walls, when it took him three days or whatever, and he broke his leg on the way, and he finally gets to the U.S. Embassy. I, my, I just have this vision of him going up to the, groping on the, on the plaque outside. You... S. A. Oh, thank God. And then he gets in and they're like, oh, come, come, of course. We'll help you. And then Obama hears about it and they're like, oh, no, that guy's got to go. You know, I just, if you, you don't have to intervene in foreign countries, but when the people themselves are rising up and the government wants to keep their own citizens prisoner, what happened to the Statue of Liberty? You know, give us your poor Ronald Mance's yearning to be free. Dissident Chen yearns to be free. But it's funny because I actually met a Chinese dissident once. A really, really, I mean, I guess in Chinese dissident circles, famous one. I was working at an investment bank. I had just gotten out of business school, I guess. And so as I think I was, I think of the 40 people who were hired, I was one of only two women. And that was a big reason I wanted to work there because I was like, they don't favor women, so if I can make it there, like, I'll have real respect. And it was true. It was a good thing. And they were the only investment bank that let women wear pants at that time. And that was a big seller for me, too. So anyway, they, as a, as a uh, like, trust-building exercise, they took us into the suburbs of New York for um, paintball in the woods. So we all had paintball teams. I immediately got out because I have no idea how to do that stuff. I mean, I'm all for the right to bear arms, but I have no clue how to bear arms. So I was just hung out in the lodge after the first round, which is where all the cool people usually are anyway. And uh, so, but there was a Chinese dissident who had been an organizer of the Tiananmen Square uprising who had joined my firm. And so I had actually sat with him on the way out, so on the way out to the paintball thing, and I really didn't know he was a big deal, but there were like insane stories about how he escaped. You know, basically like the myths around this guy were like he swam to France from China, you know, like he held his breath for 45 minutes while boats circled ahead, you know, he was bitten by sharks four times, you know, like just crazy stories about this guy. And uh, so he got out, and um, so I, all I knew was that he was a Chinese, Dissident, and of course, I was raised as a total anti-communist. And this has happened to me a couple of times. Like if there's, in China or Russia, people who grew up in communist countries, I always think they're libertarians. You know what I mean? I always think they're, you know, like the American founders. And in reality, nine out of 10 times, they're social democrats. It's like what happened in France. Socialism is totally failing, and they're still voting for socialists. It boggles the mind. So I was sitting with this guy, and still thinking, you know, he must be a freedom lover beyond anyone I've ever met before. And we were talking, and uh, and so I was just various subjects. And this was a long time ago, but I was still libertarian. And I said to him, you know, how about this drug war? You know, we've got to legalize drugs. And he said, oh, no, no, you can't legalize drugs. It would be bad for society. But I just thought, what is your problem? Like, you don't get it? You? who held your breath for 45 minutes for freedom? You don't get it? And I literally like just lost interest in the conversation and looked out the window the rest of the bus ride, which shows why I never really made it to the top in investment banking because I read about this guy once as being one of the considered successors to Warren Buffett. You know, it was of course years later. And I was like, wow, that guy's on the short list to replace Warren Buffett. I guess I should have buddied up to him a little more, but all I ever cared about was principles. Ugh, this guy. Who needs to talk to him? He got that all wrong. But the funny thing was when we got to paintball, they, uh, I mean, on the way, bus ride home, people were talking like, oh my gosh, did you see that guy out there? Like he was, he, I guess he had like built a little like a uh, hut of twigs and, and uh, leaves and stuff and just was picking people off, waiting for them to cross the river. He killed everyone on all the other teams and even the guys on his own team were worried because they knew he didn't really care. Like, if one person on his team survived, his team won. So he didn't even have to look and see what team you're on. He's just killing everybody, you know? And he's just laying in the riverbed covered in mud, not moving a muscle and popping people off. And people were like, you know, this is painful for investment bankers.
murderers, you know? And this guy just, like, massacres everyone. But you can understand why, uh, what it takes to be a Chinese dissident. Anyway, hats off to Dissident Chen. I hope he makes it. He'll end up at NYU. I'm sure he'll end up a socialist. Maybe he won't be a communist anymore, but I don't even have hope for the people who will give their lives for freedom to even know what freedom is anymore. Well, I know. So stay tuned. Till next time.